Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how to use form requests to refactor your controllers and move all your validation rules to its own separate file. So let me show you guys what I mean by that. So the way we have been defining our validation rules so far is by adding it inside our controllers. And that works fine for small projects. However, as your applications grow or if you are working on a big project or you have a lot of validation rules, this can start to make your controllers become quite bulky, right? It will make it quite long. So uh, what form requests allow us to do is basically move all of this to its own separate class, right? So let's go ahead and see how that works in practice. So in order to create a form request, of course, you can do it manually. But the way we are going to do it is by using PHP Artisan, right? So we have been using PHP Artisan to create our models controllers, things like that, we can also use it to create our form request. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to type in PHP artisan make request. So that's the command for it. And then after that, you need to pass in the name for the request. Now, the general kind of uh, format or naming scheme used throughout the Laravel community is you go ahead and call use the action you're performing on your controller. In this case, for example, update followed by the model you're performing it on so let's say update user and then with the request at the end okay so this is the general naming scheme that people use inside the Laravel community of course you can go ahead and use your own names and of course you're not always performing some sort of action on a model in those cases you can go ahead and name it what feels right to you so in this case i'm going to name it update user request and I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Now, if you like to move your request inside a subfolder, you can also go ahead and do that. Just basically add the folder name over here. For example, I could have said user slash and then update user request and Laravel would have created that subfolder for us. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the default folder, hit enter. And this will go ahead and create a new file for us under app HTTP requests update user request. So let me open up the file and I will show you guys where it is. Again, app, HTTP, and then there is now a new folder of requests, right? So let's take a look at this file. So it's a simple class that extends the form request. Now, I'm not going to be taking a look at this file today. It's a bit outside the scope of the video. But by default, it will come with two methods, okay? So the first one is this function of authorize. And you can kind of guess from the name. It's basically used to check if the user is authorized to perform this request or not, right? This is somewhat similar to... Uh, this dot authorized we've been doing so far right so is the user authorized to update this profile or not is the user authorized to delete this idea or not so we can put that authorization logic inside this method right now by default it is false false means user cannot perform it and then if you put true it means the user can okay so now i'm gonna for now i'm just gonna have it be true because setting it to false basically means it will never allow the user to perform the request kind of useless so let's set it to true for now, and I will come back to this later. And then after that, we have another method of rules. You can also guess what it does. Basically, this is where you put all your validation rules, right? So all the validation rules we had inside request validate these, we can go ahead and instead of having them inside our controller, we can move them inside the update user request. So that's the basics of the form request. So let's go ahead and actually create our first form request, right? So first step, obviously, we created it. Next up, I'm going to set this to true. And then after that, move all our validation rules, these, from the controller inside the form request and put them inside the rules array here. Now let's also format it. And again, you have anything you can do inside the controller, guys, you can do it over here as well. So you have access to all the rules. Basically, you have full access. So you can do whatever you like over here. I'm going to save it. So let's go back to our controller. So how can we go ahead and use these validation rules or uh, basically form request? So you need to add that as an argument on your method. So that's the way you do it in Laravel. So let's go ahead and do that. We need to go ahead and type hint it so Laravel knows which form request we are using. So let's type in update user request. Of course, you guys need to also import it. So um, I have a plugin. It automatically imported it, but make sure you import the class. And then after that, you can give it a name. Generally, we are using request. That's the most common used name. So that's all we have to do. Now, you may be wondering, okay, how, where does this come from? Basically, Laravel has something known as a service container, and it automatically injects this into our method when it's passed down from our router, okay? 
so from our route false so it's automatically handled by laudable you don't need to worry about it just know that it will perform the validation for you so that's all we have to do so the way this will work is before laudable even calls our update method it will perform the validation if it fails it will redirect the user so if it fails we won't even get to this you know line 40 right which is very nice okay so now that we have done that we can go ahead and delete this entire thing now if you want to get the validated items we can just say request so instead of using the request helper which we've been doing so far we can go ahead and use this request object or variable and just say validated okay and the api is almost identical to the re request helper so everything you can do on the request helper you can also do on these request objects they are actually using the base request class so we can just go ahead and use the validated method over here and get all the validated items which is very nice and then down here instead of request helper we can just go ahead and use uh, the request object same thing over here and that's it that's all we have to do guys so we have gone ahead and refactored from our previous code to now using this update user request right that's all we have to do now i'm still keeping this authorize over here because we need it if i don't add this of course since we have a uh, true inside this authorize method we would still have that security flaw so i'm going to keep this authorize and I'll later on i'll show you guys how to move this from here inside this authorized method so let's save this let's go and check if our code is working or not so this is of course our update user uh, page or uh, method so i'm going to open up my profile click on edit let's say uh, testing form a request and let's click save and as you guys can see the save functionality works let's see if the validation rules work i'll remove this and i hit save and as you guys can see, the name field is required. So it is actually re reading or performing the validation rules based on what I have defined over here. So if I make this 30, the minimum, and I try again, uh, I mean, I can still have it be quoting flick. It should still give me an error, right? It's saying the name field must be at least 30 characters, right? So as you can see, it is indeed working. Now, the way this works when the validation rules fails, guys, it won't even call your method, right? So, Laravel will first perform the validation. If it fails, it redirects. If it doesn't fail, then it will go ahead and basically call your method, right? So, that's the way it works. So, now that we have covered this, guys, let's talk about this authorize method. Now, there are two ways you can go ahead and do this. So, the first one is you can set your authorize to always be true, right? Like I have done over here and then perform the authorization inside your controller. So that's one way of doing it. And I personally generally prefer to do it this way. However, if you like, instead of having it done on the controller, we can go ahead and move it inside your form request. That is also possible. So in this case, I'm gonna remove it from here, come inside our authorize method. And in this case, we can go ahead and first access the user that's currently logged in. So the way we can do that is we can say this dot user so that's how you can access the logged in uh, user okay now in this case we also need to go ahead and add uh, the parentheses for that so let's go ahead and do it so this will give us the current user and then after that we can say can this is similar to how we did it on our blade files or inside our routes so if the current logged in user can perform some upright operation okay now i think i removed this but let's bring it back so in this case i can say update if the current login user can update and then after that we need to pass in obviously this user right so how can we go ahead and access that now the way this works is since we are using route model binding a lot of it will actually make this user be accessible inside our form request this can be a little bit confusing because it seems like okay where is this happening but basically it's done under the background by a lot of it. we can just go ahead and say this dot user now this user is different from this user in this case because the names are identical it can be a little bit confusing but this is referring to our route model bind user this one okay so that's all we have to do so let's save this and let's see if it works or not so i'll come back uh, this is back to normal so i'm going to go ahead and click save and as you guys can see it is now indeed working now to make sure it actually works I'm going to go ahead on our uh, controller. I'm going to actually disable the edit authorization so we can still view other people's profiles. So let's go ahead and be sneaky and view this user's profile. 
I'm going to go on the edit page. So of course, we are not performing it on the view edit, but we are performing the authorization. Let's also remove this. We are performing the authorization inside our request. So this should now fail because obviously I don't have access to edit this user. So let's go ahead and do hacked again. I'm going to click save. And as you guys can see, it's telling me this action is unauthorized. So basically it's performing the authorization inside our form request. And if I go to my own profile, which I should have access to, and I say this, as you can see, it actually updated it. So that's basically how you can access the user. And again, it, it works because we are performing route model binding. So that's it. It's up to you guys which way you want to do it. Now, this can look a little bit confusing, especially in this case. So that's why I don't like to use it. Now, if you're using it for uh, our idea controller, it will look a little bit better. So the way I'm going to do it, guys, is I'm actually going to have this always be true and perform the authorization on my controller. But you can definitely put it inside the form request as well. It's totally up to you guys. Both methods are just as valid. And let's also fix this, set it back to normal. So that's the basics of form request, guys. Now let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for all the other areas that we are doing uh, form requests. So let's go ahead. Next up, we have our idea controller. We are performing, we are validating on our update as well as on our store. So let's go ahead and create form requests for both of these. So I'm going to open up. I'm going to create one for this one. So I'm going to say uh, create idea request, hit enter. Now let's open up the create idea request. We are going to set the authorized to true. I'm going to move the validation rules over here, just like this. And then after that, we can come and add the validation object over here. We can say uh, create idea request request and again guys this is getting automatically imported by vs code for me so make sure you're importing it i do have a video on vs code plugins if you're using vs code make sure you have at least a php intellifence or php all-in-one so this will automatically import it for you and then over here we can just say uh, request validated all right that's all we have to do and that's it so let's go ahead and do the exact same thing for our we didn't have any authorization here, did we? No. Let's also go ahead and do the exact same thing for our update as well. Now, technically, we could have maybe uh, created like an opsert idea request and reused it for both of these. But in this case, I will go ahead and create separate requests for both of them. Again, if you obviously wanted to do the authorization, you would need a separate uh, request for it as well. So let's go ahead and do the exact same thing. I'm going to name it update idea request. We could have also named it a uh, store request, idea request. It's up to you guys. It's up to you. So let's go ahead and also do the exact same thing. I'll copy this, move it over here, set this to true. And we can get rid of this and also add it over here. So I'm going to say update idea request, request. And now we can say request validated. All right, just like that. And I think we're also doing the exact same thing on our comment controller. So let's go check it out. Yeah, we also have validation rules over here. So I'm going to go ahead and also create one for this one. I'm going to say PHP artisan make request, uh, create comment request, a lot of requests. And let's do the exact same thing we did before. Move the validation rules inside the request object set the authorize to true or do the authorization over here it's up to you guys which way you want to perform it and then now we can add the create comment request object i'm going to name the variable request some people also name it rec or rec req it's up to you guys uh, i prefer request myself that's what i'm used to so i'm going to be using that and then here we can say a request validated are we using the request object anywhere else we are not so that's all we have to do guys now let's go ahead and also test this since we don't have any automated tests we will have to manually test them out so let's go ahead and do that so first one is for creating an, an idea i'm going to say testing ideas 
it is indeed working. Next up, we have edit an idea. So let's also editing this one. Let's click on update. Editing also works. And let's also go ahead and create a comment. I'm going to say hello world and post it. And we are indeed getting an error over here. So let's see why this is happening. So you're saying a general field content doesn't have a default value. So let's see why this is happening. Let's open up our content. So I'm saying uh, request validated. Let's open up our request. Was this content? I think I might have maybe made a mistake over here. Nope, it seems to be correct. I'm saying minimum three, max that. Oh yeah, I forgot. Let's see, let's add that over here. Request validated. Let's try one more time. Yeah, it seems to be working now. I may have forgotten to save the file. Yeah, I think it was an issue with me forgetting to save it. So that's it guys for form a request very easy to do now for simple projects you can still put the validation rules inside your controllers but as you guys can see now that we have moved the validation rule to its own files our controllers are extremely small as you can see just four lines of code you can just read it at one glance same for edit destroy update and this just makes it a lot easier to manage okay and same for our uh, common controller we can even make this a bit sm smaller than this but this is very very nice okay so that's it guys for form requests. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe so you get notified of the latest videos. And I see you guys on the next episode. Have a great day. Bye.